Hey everybody, it's finally time for episode 128 of the Lost Trail Runner podcast. Well, it's about time to get another podcast out. I've been screwing off long enough. What's it been? A couple of months? I know. I'm always, uh, what do you say, (laughs) apologizing for being a slacker when it comes to putting out a podcast, but that's the way things are. I think I'd just rather run than actually record what it boils down to. I uh, ran Peachtree. A couple of weeks ago, and uh, Alexa off. I had Alexa playing, and uh, I did what? Alexa off. It doesn't want to listen to me. Anyway, uh, Laura and I both ran together as usual for Peachtree, and we did a little recording after the race on the way home in the car. So I thought I would throw that in the podcast as well as anything else I can come up with between the time I do that and when I get this thing out. I'm getting ready to head out to the trail at Stone Mountain before it rains today. I'm not sure when that'll be. Probably in the afternoon. It's been raining in the afternoons. And it isn't ever just a drizzle. It's always a thunderstorm, which I'm not real enthused about. I just can't run in thunder and lightning. I don't mind running in rain. Rain doesn't bother me a bit, but thunder and lightning is uh, my nemesis, you might say. I'm uh, getting ready to getting ready to get ready. I guess that's it. To head out to the mountain like I said I uh, got some I haven't run in Nikes in a long time let me tell you I've been running in Hoka's and Altra's almost exclusively with every now and then a uh, Brooks but I bought a pair of Nike uh, trail shoes the Terra Kiger is that how to pronounce it? Anyway, those are a really good trail shoe. I love them. I, I, have, I mean, I haven't worn Nikes, and so I can't even remember when. Except, well, I can't say remember when, because I do have a pair of Nike uh, uh, Freeze that I run on the track with occasionally, but not very often. But anyway, I've run, I don't know how many miles I got on these. Terra Kigers, but they've really been good shoes. And I don't even have to wear orthotics in them. That's one thing with with the Nike Freeze. I don't have to wear orthotics, and these Kigers, I didn't have to wear orthotics. And I wear orthotics in almost every shoe I run in. In my, the Hoka's, I wear orthotics, and my uh, Altras, I wear orthotics, which probably doesn't do too. I mean. An ultra is a zero drop. When I put my orthotics in it, I bet it raises my heel up a, at least a millimeter or two. So it ends up being not completely flat, but they're still comfortable. And what's strange is I uh, have Torin 3.0s in the Ultra, and I had kind of put them aside and hadn't been running in them at all. For some reason, I thought maybe they didn't have enough cushioning, but the past two weeks, I've been running in those Torn 3s, and they're just comfortable. I just really like those shoes. I don't know that, you know, I could do a half marathon in them, but I am I could do a 10K, I'm sure. Of course, uh, Peachtree, I ran in my Hoka Bondi 6s. But I might uh, 
try a short road race in these Torin 3s just to see how they are. Anyway, getting back to my Nikes. I love them. <laughs> they just are a good pair of shoes. Anyway, I'm going to cut out for now and uh, finish getting ready to head out to the mountain to uh, run. So I'll see you in a little bit. I'm setting in my backyard in my little gazebo, which is not completely been destroyed by storms, but uh, it's in pretty bad shape now. Got holes in the roof and it's leaning a little bit. Uh, not a recent storm, but one probably, I don't know how long ago. That has nothing to do with this. Anyway, I've got a story to tell. As you'll have heard just prior to this part of the recording, I was getting ready to go out to Stone Mountain to run on the trail in my uh, Nike Xterra, not Xterra, Terra Kiger 5s because I love those shoes. Well, I did go out to the trail to run and I got exactly about, oh, I can't say exactly, but about two tenths of a mile down the trail tripped on a rock, tore my left knee up, <clears throat> ended up walking back to the car, blood all over the place. Of course, I also ripped up the palm of my hand and my elbow and various other things, but not as bad as my left knee. And I went back home and I tried to clean it out and all that stuff. <clears throat> and then I decided, well, I had to do something, so I went down to Lilburn Park and walked for three miles and uh, that was that. I put a bandage on it. And then uh, that was on a Saturday afternoon. So this is a w two weeks ago today that this happened. And uh, Monday of that next week, it was bothering me. So I ended up going to the emergency room and I got them to clean it out they gave me a tetanus shot they gave me 10 days of antibiotics told me if it didn't do better in a couple of days call my doctor and uh, that was that so i've been wearing a bandage on my knee for two weeks now and it's slowly getting better in fact the past couple of days i've i've taken the bandage off when i've gone out for my easy jogs, I guess you'd call them. I would uh, go out and run a little bit and walk a little bit, run a little bit, walk a little bit, and get in three miles. I did that twice this past week. And last Sunday, a week ago, uh, I went out to Stone Mountain on the trail and I walked around the mountain for six and a half miles using my trekking poles which was I, I, I like trekking poles but I tell you what when you're not used to them they give your shoulders and upper and your arms a workout I didn't realize that so anyway <clears throat> I'm just now kind of working my way into to running now after two weeks I tried to walk consistently so I wouldn't lose a lot of fitness and then uh, I think this past Wednesday was the first day I actually ran some and now today's Saturday and I ran some today so I got in about six a little over six miles of running and tomorrow I'm going to try to do six and a half miles just easy you know so but <laughs> it was it was just a a mess because I I'd, I'd said I'm going out there I love these shoes I'm gonna run on the trail and I went out there I love those shoes I tripped on a rock tore my knee up didn't get to run on the trail I haven't run on the trail since I did walk that six and a half miles on the trail but not in my Kiger fives and the past two runs I ran down uh, Wednesday I ran on the Greenway Trail in Lilburn, downtown Lilburn, 
and today I ran through Old Town Lilburn and in Lilburn Park and I used my uh, Solomon Sensoride 2's which those are good shoes also they're supposed to be a trail shoe but they're just all around good running shoe I think and the version I got of the Sensoride 2's are called they're totally blue shoes blue soles blue uppers orange and it's got a different pattern on the bottom it's called in the shadow of Mont Blanc it's a special version of the uh, sensor ride 2 that I ordered <clears throat> and they're, they're very nice shoes but they're just for my easy runs and uh, casual wear I, I the Solomons I've got I got a pair of sense ride the original ones and I got these Sensoride 2's the only two pairs of Solomons I got and these Sensoride 2's to me are much better shoe for running than my Sensoride 1's they seem to be more cushioned uh, but Solomons are known for being more of a sturdy trail shoe not a cushy shoe you know so anyway that's kind of my story of what's happened to me in the past couple of weeks and it kind of I had just got into the mood where I was going to get this podcast out and I had recorded that portion before I went out to Stone Mountain and then after I tripped and fell on the trail it kind of wiped out my motivation to podcast at all <laughs> my knee hurt <laughs> I was miserable <laughs> I couldn't run. I can't even, I really, you know, I I have a little routine I do in the mornings where I do like uh, push-ups and stuff like that. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. And with my palm of my hand hurt, I couldn't even do my push-ups. So it just totally screwed up everything. Anyway, uh, getting on with this particular podcast, Tomorrow I'm going to try to get in six and a half easy miles and then try to uh, uh, go on from there. This is August now, so it's been two or three months since I, since I did a podcast, which aggravates me, but nothing I can do about it. you got to have motivation, right? And I, I go through spells of getting excited about podcasting and then getting busy and doing something else and for totally forgetting about it and then feel guilty about not doing it again. And I shouldn't feel guilty about not doing it. It's a hobby. It's not like I'm making a living off this thing. <laughs> so any, anyway... Uh, As you know, Peachtree Road Race was on the 4th of July, and my daughter Laura and I ran like we always do. And I think it turned out this was my 41st Peachtree instead of my 40th. I thought it was my 40th, but it wasn't. And uh, we ran that Peachtree, and after we ran Peachtree and went to the after race party at Philippides that Jeff Galloway puts on while we were in the car coming back to my house we had a little discussion and I recorded that discussion and that's what's going to be the rest of this podcast so enjoy it see ya I felt awesome today for the 50th Peachtree Road Race I don't know if I felt awesome, but I, I had a good, good run. It was slower than last year, but... I don't know. i got to look at my time because I don't know. I feel like I was right close to it. I, th I think last year I did like a 71. This year I did a 75, but that was 6.36 miles. Yeah, My see. 10K time on my uh, app said uh, I did a... 74 something so who Very knows close. yeah I don't but i mean i felt good 
the whole way. Yeah, I felt and, good uh, too. The whole way. I, I warmed up running telephone poles and then I put on my Galloway timer after about a half mile and ran 40, walk 20 for the whole race. And I averaged a little under 12 minute pace, 11 something. Which on a day like today, which they had the it's weather thing on uh, yellow, whatever yellow means. Yellow it's means it's hot and humid. Drink oh. lots of fluids. Oh, well, anyway, and don't it was try yellow. To race. So I felt pretty good for the pace I was running I felt with the temperature too. and humidity. I mean, I didn't feel overheated and I didn't, I you know. I do think I drank more water or or not necessarily drank, but I got stopped at the water stops more this year and put some on my face and on my hands and neck. Well, I, I just went through the water stops and grabbed a cut and dumped it. it. Well, I drank a little bit and dumped the rest on my head. Yeah, I drank a little and, bit and then put some on my head and on my face. And I felt pretty good. I did, I did not feel overheated at all, not any, during the race. And I had no plan. <laughs> what do you mean, no plan? I had no plan of walking and running or whatever. So I oh. just ran. And You didn't even use your... I didn't use my thing, oh. my timer. But um, I knew my first three miles I was pretty good because it's mostly downhill so I could run a majority of it and walk a little bit but well I, I knew that uh, from cardiac hill to the end stinks you know you got the uphill at cardiac hill yes. you got the uphill by colony square the yes. fifth mile yes so I just did the 40 20 thing chuggling along yeah. going I'm not gonna push it here that way I don't lose as much time in those two I go straight. Yeah. Okay. I won't lose as much time. And I was just kind of consistent. I mean, I did slow down, but I mean, I was happy with it. I don't know where I'm going, so. Well, you turn left up here. Oh, that's what I thought. I didn't know that. Oh, oh we're in the car going Obviously. home from. <laughs> I don't know. We, we have just left the uh, party at Jeff Galloway's, Fidipides, and Ainsley Mall. And we're headed back to my house now, so we're we're recording in the car. This is yes. a car cast. A car cast. Yes, a car cast. I mean, hey, you could start a new thing. A car cast. A car cast is new. That's been used before. Uh, I never heard of it. Well, you're not a you're not up. On I'm not up on things like podcasts and car right. cast. Right. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You're not. But you're a you're a boating person. Yeah. And I am fishing. Going, I am going to go get in the lake and soak the rest of the day. Well, I'm just going to go home and take a shower. <laughs> well, I might take a nap, too. That would be nice. But, um, but we did get our picture taken with the Olympian and first ever Peachtree winner, Jeff Galloway, today. Yes, we did. You've had pictures with him before, but I, oh, I might have one other time. When we did the um, Jacksonville, what was yeah, that? Yeah, we were down there for the Donna. Donna. Did the half, half marathon. marathon. That was when I had a pulled muscle oh, or something. You, I couldn't run it. Remember? And so I ran it, and that was my fastest one I ever ran in my entire life. Yep. That's the best shape I was ever in. Now, that's a good We ought to do that race. Yeah, that was a pretty or good race. But it was 10K, freezing to death. Since you want to switch to 10Ks, maybe they got a 10K or 5K. Yeah, that was the coldest and windiest race that I think they that had. I've ever there. ran. Maybe that's why I ran so fast to get my butt back and get warm. But I've been colder at Disney. Oh no. Oh, not I me. have. Because only not because the temperature was colder, but because you oh, stand, stand out there, there, there for waiting. two hours yeah. and freeze to death. And, yeah. You know. So, but anyway. Yeah. But the we wind. We didn't have to worry about freezing this morning. You know that was my fastest race ever. Well, Which one? My fastest half marathon ever. The Donna half? Yeah, because I did it in 208. That's pretty good. And uh, the, the thing was, I 
stay true to my Galloway time. Run walk? I ran one and a half and walked 30. Oh. The entire time. Yeah. So. 4020 seems to work okay for me. Being a geezer. Uh, I'm a geezer too. <laughs> you ain't a geezer like I'm a geezer. Uh, I count myself as one. You, yes I am, you beat me today. Huh? I said you beat me today so you're not that big of a geezer. Well, I'm just talking about a geezer in age. Age-wise. Yeah. Well, I age doesn't mean anything. I'd be curious to see how I placed in my age group in Peachtree. Oh, yeah. I saw some old well, folks there's, out there's there. There's still some hardcore geezers. I, I was going to say, I saw they, some older folks out there. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're more hardcore and dedicated to racing than I am. Right. You know, I mean, if I, if I wanted to train, I could probably run a lot faster than I do. But the training I do is not hardcore training. Right. I mean, I, I, like, to, I like to have a schedule, and that's why I do that uh, customized training plan with Galloway. Right. Yeah. But as far as uh, hardcore training, I, you know, I don't. I don't have time to do hardcore I get training. In my, I get in my required miles <laughs> or required distance miles. or time for my training plan but I I don't I don't think I ever push the pace trying to uh, go get faster. faster I know but you've been doing the distance because you've been doing oh, some yeah. five mile and yeah I've been doing it some run, longer just, runs uh, I have it three three miles but I'm I'm gonna start how many times have you heard that? Gonna I'm going to start doing one long run of that week. Uh, we're, re we're recording, right now, so one, this is, is going to be documented. I know, now, gonna, now. You're gonna, you're gonna, if I have time, that's my oh, caveat. Oh, there you go. It's the old <laughs> I have time trick. Well, it, I do. The, if I Hard, do hardcore miles, people, it might regardless be three and of a half their time. Miles. Hardcore people, regardless of their time, they'll Big get time. up early in the morning I'm and not. go out and run. I didn't to get say it I was, over with. You I, could do that. I didn't say I was hardcore. Oh. <laughs> I just said I'm going to try to do one longer than three mile run a week. That might be three and a half miles. Oh, I see. Or four or five. Oh, do you have any of my Galloway books? I think I have the 10K. That's what I should do. I think that's 5K and 10K. That's what I should do. You ought to just do that plan and start from the got, very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know that the long runs are that long, like compared to the half marathon training. Yeah. Because like half marathon, it go goes to up like to about 16, 17 miles. miles. Yeah. And but I, I don't think 10k does. But 10k has a lot more interval yeah. runs, and you don't like interval runs. I don't. Well, I gotta find a. You do them not on, you do you do them on a track? Me? Yeah. I Sometimes. go to Parkview. Yeah, you do them on a track. I don't know that I have a track. Well, a lot of times I, I, I go down to go. Lilburn Park on the Greenway Trail yeah. since it's pretty flat. Yeah. And I just set my watch to do intervals. You know? Yeah. And and just run them there. Yeah. But the thing is is my intervals are kind of lackluster. <laughs> <laughs> I no hardcore I to them. I don't really push them like I used to. Well, I mean, back back when I was hardcore, we used to try to do intervals. We'd go down to Grady High School down by Piedmont Park yeah. after work, and we'd do quarter miles down there and try to do 90-second quarters and, and uh, below. Right. And I, I would do maybe four of them, and then I'd take off and go over to Piedmont Park and just run five miles where everybody else was still doing intervals. I just I just couldn't handle doing intervals. Well, I think what helped me not die today, which, I mean, like I said, I felt pretty good, is we, I do, when I run at home, 
we have hills. Yeah, Even if do. I walk, we have hills. Well, so I got hills at my house. I have like two big hills. Running over to park view and back. Oh yeah, if you walk from your house, yeah. yeah. But I think that helps even if and sometimes I'll run at Lilburn Park and I run back, you know that hill you go up out of Lilburn Park going up to... Oh, uh, yeah, that's a Arcado. really long... That's probably close to a mile. Yeah, that's a long uphill. But um, I think that helps even if you're walking those hills. I mean, like, if you're walking. Yeah. Like, if you walk three miles and you have those types of hills in your course, I think that helps with your running on the days that you run. What we need to That's do is my, more of those hill workouts we uh, do over at Lilburn Park. <laughs> yeah. Those work. Yeah. Those, I like doing those, those better than of, intervals because oh, no, they're shorter. I, yes, I agree there. I agree with you there. I would rather do those than intervals. There's a lot of traffic today. Yes, there is. I thought this was a holiday. Yes, I guess they're, I don't know where they're going. They're going, to all the lake, going up to uh, Lake Hartwell. Hartwell, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Probably. So you can't go out in the lake without being in a traffic jam. Well, I'm not leaving the dock today because the fireworks are right on the point and I'm going to sit in the water and watch the fireworks. You know, when I first moved up here, Nothing I still had my Hobie catamaran. Yeah. And I was thinking about bringing it up here and, and putting it in Lake Lanier. And I went up to Lake Lanier. And you said, forget it. And, and I like a traffic jam at the boat ramp. Yeah. And I go, no. No. So I sold it. Well, <laughs> just imagine said, what it's... That was how many years ago? 30-something years ago? Yeah. Well, just imagine what it's, prob it's like now. I, w I wouldn't... You can't pay me to go to Lake Lanier. Unless it's in the winter time, because it's so bad. Yeah. Hartwell is not like that yet. Yet being the key word. Now next weekend, or weekend after next, I haven't seen anything on the Decatur to Cab Y four mile race. That's you ought to do that race. Mm. Well, it's I need usually to... like the week after Peachtree. Oh, is it? Yeah, and if not, they've got a Dirty Spokes has a trail race, Shawnee Mountain. That's incoming. Yeah, uh, and it's a th they got a three mile and a six mile. Oh, they do. Yeah, I like doing their three mile races. Yeah. They're short, but they're trail races, and they're just fun to do. You don't kill yourself. You know? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I came close at Lilburn Park. Not too long ago. Well, yeah, but that wasn't even a trail. You're you're on <laughs> you're on a wooden bridge. You, you, you got to learn to lift your feet up. See. Well, I don't know. It was pretty traumatic for me. I thought I broke my nose. Well, it looked kind of bad, but. Oh, well, I still have a bump there. After a while, you probably did break your nose. Well, I don't know if I broke it, but I think there there's a chip. Like it chipped? Yeah. Or something right there. What is this lane closed thing? A broke down car for no reason. Anyway, I, I'm going to have to look. And if, if they got the Decatur to Cab Y four miler, I might do that next week. And, uh, if they don't have it, I don't know why they wouldn't. They've had it every year since I've been here. I thought they did. The, they changed that to a cross country or something. No. No. I think I ran it last year, and or a year before. But Dirty Spokes has that trail race. I might do it. Yeah. If the if the uh, track club doesn't have that to cater to cap. I race. need to do a race in August. Because I did the dam run in May. Yeah. June, I missed running a race. July, I did Peachtree. August, I need to find one. 
You can get in this lane now. Oh. This is the exit only lane. Oh. I got to renew my uh, training plan with uh, Chris Twiggs next week, I think it is. But I don't know what I want to. I'm, I'm running that half marathon in December, but. I just have this block on doing a half marathon training program. I'd rather do like a 10K training program and then run a half marathon. Well, because you, know? you don't want to do the long runs. I don't. Well, that's... then I've dredged out all my old Arthur Lydiard books, and uh, I've always liked his training. But it's based. It's usually like. You're running about six days a week, but you're running like a half half hour Monday, hour Tuesday, half hour Wednesday, hour Thursday, half hour Friday, mm -hmm. and then on the weekend, of course, you got a long run, and I forget what, that, that's usually Sunday, but I forget what Saturday was, but I mean, it's a, a, a lot more mileage than what I've right. been running. Right, right. Cause I've been I've been running minimum mileage. Let me tell Are you. Are you sure? Cause I see yeah. you and you're on there going just did five miles. Yeah, but I do. I like I I run Tuesday and Thursday. Right. Usually like 45 minutes. Yeah. So I might and then I run on, on Sunday, Thursday which is the Tuesday. long run. The rest of the time just walking or stuff right. like that. I really mileage wise running is not that much. Right. You know I mean we're not talking. I used to, back when I used to run, I used to try to average a minimum of 21 miles a week, which is three miles a day. Every and, day, though. And, and above, and above, you know, like right. up to 30. I mean. I tried to hit 30 a lot, particularly when I was racing. Three miles, that's running seven days a week. Yeah, but you don't run three miles every day. You might run six, six one miles, day right. and three another, you know. I just have such a great three-mile course at home. You just do three, 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 I three, do three, 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 three. I like three. I like my three miles. I well, gotta, you gotta have. you got to have variety. I know. i got to figure out a different course well, out you got to go a different direction I and know. do a four. you got to do a about a six mile course so you can do a three and a six yeah because if you can get used to doing the six at least you're yeah in shape for you know yeah. races up to about 10k. 10k yeah so i'm gonna try to run up to the main road how far is that i don't know i gotta t i gotta try it and see and then, you know, because that one day that me and you ran, I, we went right, but then I go down that one street. I haven't right. been running that way. The one down near that covered bridge? Yeah. Okay. I haven't been running that way. Um, I always run left out of my street, so I need to go, I need to go right out of my street and go by the covered bridge and go down there and then go left. Yeah. It's like we did that day. I think we did five miles. See, I've been trying to change up my training, like like on, on my training plan. Like usually, when you run with me on Tuesdays, we're doing a drill workout. Yeah. Well, on Thursdays, it's usually like uh, a tempo run where we warm up for ten minutes and then run like race pace for right. for so many minutes and then go back to cool down. And I've been doing. I've been going out to Stone Mountain and running that on the trail. Oh. Just for variety, right? With my uh, new Nike shoes, which which were banning. Well, I know I I really like those shoes. I don't put orthotics in them. I just run with them. Yeah. And they're just comfortable and uh, they feel good. So I just go out there and run in them. So I hadn't run in Nikes in a long time. Well, as far as I uh, don't run in Nikes. The last time I ran in Nikes was like when I was running cross country in high school. They're, they've gotten narrower, oh. or I've gotten fatter. But yeah, well, let me guess which it is. They're pretty narrow shoes. <laughs> so uh. I don't. 
care for them that much. They're too tight on my feet. Well, my my main go-to shoes are my Hoka's and my Ultras. I saw a woman that had some Hoka's on today that I liked. That I liked how they looked. They didn't look. These don't look that bad. Yeah. Yeah, what? There's the old, these look different. These they are look, Bondi 6's here. They looked really good. Her shoes look good. They have a, they, they're pretty high stack height still on these. And then I talked to a lady that did a, she had tie-dye Asics on. Yeah. That I liked. And I asked her and she said she ran a half marathon somewhere. I used to like Asics. In Kentucky or somewhere like that and they had them at the expo. Trouble, trouble is, I've found that the less heel lift I've got, the, the better. better off I am. The higher the heel lift, the more prone I am to getting like plantar fasciitis or some kind of yeah, strain exactly. on the bottom of my foot. I don't know why, but I've been running in Hoka's, which is a 4% a 4 millimeter drop, yeah. which is not too high. And ultras or zeros. Well, and I don't I think know what these, these Nike, are. These I think the Nikes zero. I got, the new Nike trail shoes, I think they're fours, which is unusual for a Nike because Nikes are usually at least an eight. Mm. But I think they're a four, and they and they feel comfortable, and I like them, and they're really lightweight too. Well, these these uh, Mizuno, these are Under Armour, which aren't those Mizuno's? I think Under Armour bought Mizuno, but I I, don't know. I think. They still have a separate brand. Brand, yeah. I don't know, but these are Under Armour, and I really like them. I got a pair of Under Armour trail shoes that I had never wear. Why? I don't know. I just like these. They're, to me, these have been the most comfortable shoes I've had in a while. And I don't get any blisters, and they're comfortable, and my feet don't fall asleep. I, my feet used to fall asleep. Oh yeah. Around mile three. Right. These on these shoes, they've never fallen asleep, and I don't know. You know, I don't know why, but they're very, very comfortable, and I need to get some more of them. The problem is at the at the Under Armour store, they don't keep like these I don't right. you know they don't keep the same brand of, the same model very long I thought you knew somebody that no that was Mizuno oh yeah her brother this school here yeah. I gotta check it out and see if they get a tracking back oh that would be nice if they did yeah cause, cause that's right there cause that's less than a half mile from my house I know Parkview is about two Two and a half miles. They might have something back there. I don't know if it does or not, because they don't normally have stuff in middle school, do they? Well, no, the one, the the elementary school's got a little track behind it over there by Parkview. Really? I mean, it, I don't know that it's a, any kind of a standard track, track, but it's a loop. Right. That they. I don't know if they go out and walk on it or what they do for recess or something. Right. They've got one. And that used to be that school. Oh. It moved. And then the elementary school took over everything over there. So you oh, got, okay. I mean, the, yeah, the elementary school. Camp Creek. Yeah. Well... It's just about time to quit recording because we're um, almost home. Another peach tree. Yep. Done and gone. Yep. The 50th. Number 50, which is my 41st peach tree. I thought it was my 40th and I counted wrong. <laughs> so, well, so I've it's never 41. counted, but I've done a lot. Yeah. I've done at least 30 something. Yep. So. Well. I'm going to turn this off. Okay? Bye. Bye.
hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. We'll be here next time. Keep the emails coming in and be sure to subscribe.